this video, we'll work with Sigma 7 parameters. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. We'll connect the project to the demo and back up the parameters. Then we'll change a couple parameters and save that to the project also. Finally, we'll initialize the servos to factory default and then restore the original parameters to each axis. I invite you now to follow along with me. You need connection to the remote demo for this training, and you need to start Sigma Win Plus version 7. You may already have the project file open, but uh, just in case you don't, go to the home screen and open the project file that we've been working with. And we had called that file Sigma 7 Training. Now you notice when you open a project file, you don't automatically go online. What you don't want to do is to go to the home screen and then connect. If you click connect the servo pack here, that actually closes your project file. So let's cancel out of this and open that project file again. Instead what you'll do is connect the servos of this project file that you wish to go online with. So go to the menu and at the top there's a connect button. Let's go ahead and connect the 7W dual axis. And that takes a little bit to connect. And you see now we have some feedback here. We're online. You can close this one and also open and connect the 7S single axis connect. Okay. And we'll close that menu too. Now let's see what we need to do to back up the parameters of both of these servos to this project file. Let's start with the X and Y here under the menu. Go to Edit Parameters. And you see that brings up the parameters for axis A and axis B. Return our demo is uh, X and Y from this servo here. And simultaneously with that, we can bring up the parameters for the other axis, which we're calling axis Z. Edit Parameters. And now we have three columns with all of the parameters for all three axes. To back them up, just click anywhere in one of the columns and then go to Save to Project. It says that was temporary. OK. Let's go into Axis A now also and click Save to Project. OK. And one note here, when you're saving here Axis B, Axis A and Axis B are saved together at all times. You can see what's available and what you've saved by looking at Read from Project. You can see the servo pack and the time at which you saved. You can go find the other one. And also see the time that you had saved it. You can read those in or delete them if there's an extra one that you don't want to get confused with. I'm just going to close that for now. We'll use that later. There is also another way to back up these parameters. If you don't want them associated with the project only, you can export the parameter file to a USRS servo pack file. And let's call that here X and Y. And save it. We can also export the Z axis. Export USRS. Let's call it Z save that. What's the difference between saving to the project and exporting? In the end, in both cases, you have saved the parameters, but saving to the project associates them with this project file that we're in right now, which we called Sigma 7 Training. And exporting lets you pull those parameters out of the servo and use them in any project file in any servo. You can always go to Import find that same file, it doesn't matter what project you're in. So just a little bit different way to handle it. We think that if you have a machine with many servos here in this list, it could end up being a lot easier just to save the parameters to this project. That way you only have one project file to manage. I think those parameters are backed up, so let's go on now to edit a few of these parameters. At this point, let's focus on the Z axis, the SGD7S axis A. And there's a very long list of parameters, as you can see here. Therefore, in order to locate a parameter more easily, we'll recommend that you use the category here. 
instead of all constant number, you could look at the function selection. That's at least a somewhat shorter list. You have gain, position related parameters, speed related parameters, torque related parameters, sequence related parameters, meaning levels for the different outputs and inputs and features that the amplifier can detect, and I.O. signal mapping, which input and output maps to which pin on the connector. There are parameters for the Mechatrolink communication, and another category called common parameters, which you don't really need to set, but they can be read in by the controller, making it easy to find out pertinent information about that servo. So now see if you can find parameter PN520. That will be under sequence, PN5X. This is related to the last section where we had that position deviation overflow alarm. And one of the possible causes was that this parameter was set too low. So why don't we play with that here on the Z axis and add a couple more zeros to that, make that 100 times larger by adding 0, 0, and hit enter there to accept that. And you see when you hit enter, it highlights that cell green. And what do you think that means? Does it mean the parameter has been sent to the drive? Actually, it means that this parameter has been changed on the screen, but it's not sent to the drive. So how do you send it to the drive? Well, one way to do it, let me make this column a little smaller, is usually off to the right, you'll see a little uh, tooltip pop up, and you could read from or write to the servo in this way. Now, sometimes I have difficulty clicking on the correct icon, so another way to do it is to use this button called Edit Parameters. Little icon shows the, uh, the green cell even, and an arrow into the servo. So you can click this Edited Parameters, and that writes it into the servo. Now it's not green anymore. Okay, just to see if that parameter took effect, let's use the demo. In the previous section, we had set the speed to 4500, and that gave us a position overflow alarm. Let me try it again here, servo on, 4500, and jog, no alarm. It's going pretty fast. So that parameter took immediate effect. Now let's change another parameter. What if I told you the parameter is the speed limit? Where would you go to find the speed limit? I hope you're thinking to look at the speed category. And the one I'm thinking of here is called the maximum motor speed parameter PN316. Let's change the maximum motor speed from the default to 600 RPM. By the way, min minus one means per minute or revolutions per minute. Let's try 600 RPM and enter. Again, that one turns green. And how do you write that to the servo? I'll use the edited parameters button. And you see for this parameter, there's a note uh, to enable the settings that were written, turn off the main circuit and control power supplies and then turn them back on. This means that you need to, one way or another, reboot this servo. And of course, turning the power off and on again would certainly do the job. But we can also use software reset for this. We did go through software reset in the previous video. But if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll walk you through it here again. We'll go to uh, the menu. We need software reset, but it's grayed out. Why is it grayed out? It's grayed out because we can't do a software reset with this parameter screen open. So let's close this edit parameter screen. So the parameters have not been saved. Any changes will be lost. Do you want to save them to the project file? Yeah, let's do that. Let's save these changes to the project file. The parameter list is temporarily saved. Click the save button. Okay, let's do that. Talking about this save button here, save project. Now those parameters are part of this project. And we were off to hit a software reset. So under the menu again, we can click software reset and execute. But this time it does not let us use software reset because the servo is on. You see Sigma Win Plus doesn't want to take over your machine. So it's requiring that you bring the machine to a quiet state with all the servos off. It's a good idea. Let's click okay back to our HMI panel. We can just turn the servo off. And this time it'll work under the menu, software reset, and execute. All right, it says always reconnect after execution of this function. What does that mean? 
Okay, that means go here to the menu, click disconnect, and then click connect again. It's just a safeguard to be sure that you have the most recent text displayed in the software. Okay. And let's see if that parameter is still in there. Look at edit parameters. We're just focusing on the Z axis now with the SGD7S. And we had looked at the speed parameter. 316. Yeah, it's still set to 600. Let's test that out in the demo, see what it does. So, servo on. Now here I'm clicking servo on and nothing seems to be happening. And you may also notice that the controller has some red lights on, the alarm lights. And what's happening is this controller is losing communication over Mechatrolink 3 to this drive when it does the software reset. Real quickly here, if you look at the alarms of this controller, it does say that there's an invalid code from the drive and a reboot's required. You could do the reboot here in the web UI or you could also do it through this remote I.O. interface. Soft Reboot Controller and Servos. Let's do it this way. And now the controller has rebooted and I'm able to turn the servo off and back on. So we can now try the jog. And we get an alarm, A510. So it seems that this parameter PM316 did its job. If you wish to troubleshoot this parameter and look at the alarm trace data, I'll let you do that. However, in the interest of time, I'm going to just reset this alarm through the Yaskawa Remote IO interface with alarm reset. Let's say now that we're happy with this parameter set, so we'd like to save it to the project. It says that's temporary, we click OK, and if you want it to be permanent, you click Save. If you look at Read from Project, now we have three different parameter files from the three times that we saved on this axis. This was the first one that we originally saved. This was the one that it prompted us to save when we had to close the edit parameter screen. And this is the one that we just saved right now. Let's close that. Now let's go through initializing the servo to factory default. You can see that under the function area, there's initialize. But before we do initialize, let's look at a comparison if you click compare, you can compare with defaults for this axis A. Notice that the category does apply. So if you want to see all of the comparison, go to all constant number. That shows you every single parameter that's not at factory default, including the two that we changed right here. So that was just informative. Let's end comparison display. Now go through and initialize first the z-axis. Okay, and under function, you have the initialize parameters. If you restore the default settings, the settings may longer agree with the current machine settings. Yes, that is true. Is that okay? Okay. Once again, can't do anything with the servo on. Let's click okay and uh, turn the servo off here. Initialize. Okay. And as before, turn the power supply off and on again. The settings will be applied the next time the power supply is turned on. Now, rather than do this in two steps where we do the software reset and then have to reboot the controller, let's just reboot the whole system through the soft reboot controller and servos button on the Yaskawa Remote I.O. And it looks like we're back up. But now back to the parameters. If we were to compare them right now, compare with defaults, you see that it's not the same list as it was before. Uh, these are all of the uh, Mechatrol link and common parameters. There's some parameters that the controller itself is automatically setting, but the parameters that we had set under speed and under sequence are no longer different than default. So we can end the comparison display. Now as a challenge exercise for you, let's close this out and let's see if you can do the same type of thing with the SGD7W with its parameters. One difference here is that while there is only one file to import or to read or to export and save, there's only one file for both of the axes together. Each axis is initialized to factory default or compared with the default. 
individually. So I just did compare. This is an individual comparison. And likewise, doing a software reset really only software resets one axis at a time. You are invited to go through and do some of those same parameter operations on the dual axis amplifier. However, at this point, I'm going to restore the parameters of the SGD7S axis Z. Let's open up those parameters again. And you may even know what we need to do here. We need to read some parameters from this project file onto this axis. And like we showed before, there's these different times at which we saved. Which version do we want? I want to go back to the very first parameter set that we created. Let's read that one in and click yes. You can close this. And already you can see there's a couple of the parameters that are highlighted green. As before, these are the parameters that are not the same as what's in the amplifier right now. Therefore, we need to write the edited parameters as we did before. Click OK and reboot. I'll reboot through the controller again. And we're back online now with those original parameters. So if I turn the servo on and jog the motor, I get the alarm AD00 as before. Of course, I can reset it. And the parameters have been restored. I did want to say if you make a mistake and somehow you lose the parameter set and you can't get the parameters back into the servo or you can't get the right parameter set, don't worry. You can go to the web interface like you did in the beginning of this course, log in, and then under setup, go to drive parameters, and you can write all the parameters from the controller also. The controller has a copy of these parameters. That's just what our controller can do. And if you're not sure if you have the right parameters, you could even verify. If you verify each of these axes, tells you if you have the correct user parameters in there. And that's it for Sigma 7 parameters and Sigma Win Plus version 7. We will continue to work with the parameters in the upcoming sections of the training series. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Sigma 7, please go to yaskawa.com. Products. Sigma 7 Servo Products.